Hey, Boaz here from Next Pittsburgh. I am on Butler Street in Lawrenceville to check out Lawrence Hall. Right now it's under construction, but they've invited us in for a sneak peek. And this building has been a lot of things over the years. And to tell us all about it, we've got Brett here. Brett owns the building. Thanks for having us, Brett. My pleasure, Boaz. So we're in this historic space. What year was this building built? Um, as best as we can find, the uh, 1890s. Wow. And you bought it a couple years ago. How did that happen? My wife and I were walking by. We lived just about five blocks down the street, and we saw it for sale and spent some time thinking about what we could do with the space, and the food hall just sort of naturally emerged as the best possible option. Well, I love that. Well, let's walk in here. Obviously, there's a lot happening. It looks like you've been busy the past few weeks. Yeah, it's been a labor of love. And then each of these little cubbies will essentially be another food-based business, a little restaurant. Exactly. So we are going to host four independent restaurateurs. Um, so they will each operate their own business. They'll have their own menus. And then let's talk a little bit about the history of this space. The first thing you can see sort of associated with this address is a laundry business. Yeah, in the 1890s, uh, we find references for Palace Laundry. Um, I'm not sure how that worked in the space. You know, I think back then things were quite a bit different than they are today uh, for laundry services. Um, and then we know that in the early 1900s, so call it 1905 to 1919 or so, it was a live action theater. So it was like vaudeville acts were like coming through. They were juggling bears on unicycles. Who knows what? Who knows? Yeah. yeah. Actors and actresses putting on live plays for people. What I love in these, you have these newspaper snippets, or like little snippets, yep. and it talks about they're like looking for amateurs to perform. That's right. Yeah, it was a, it was a community um, staple. So 15 years or 20 years or so, um, and people were kind of known to come here and perform. And then at a certain point, it turned into a movie theater, and then there was a fire, too. Yeah, so in 1920, from what we can tell, it was being remodeled to be used as a motion picture theater. Um, during the process of remodeling, they were actually behind schedule, and the day before grand opening, they lit some fires in here to dry the plaster. Apparently, it caught fire um, out of the early morning on the day of the opening, and uh, that destroyed the plans for the motion picture theater. Wow. And you said there's like a, a place where you can see some of the like marks from a, a fire. Can you show this to us? Sure. Yeah. So first you'll notice these giant trusses here at the top. This was actually early fireproofing. So the idea was that the trusses were so large that they wouldn't catch fire uh, structurally and kind of like too big to burn. Exactly. Kind of too big to fail in the original sense, um, even if the outside caught fire, which it did. Um, they still retained their structural integrity. So we've painted the bottom of the roof, so you can't really Watch out for that brush over here. <laughs> you can't really see the fire damage on the roof anymore, but on this last rear truss, um, we can go up there and check it yeah, out. Yeah, let's go up. You can see some fire damage. So this is the truss here, where you can see kind of some of that smoke damage and, and fire damage. You can see the discoloration up on the top cord. Wow, that's very cool. And it's like, just I love the things, you know, that you can see, sort of these little like skeletal marks of like, oh, there used to be like a window here at some point, And now, you know, there's a building next door, but who knows what that looked out to at one point. Maybe they were like, you know, bringing in the bleach for the laundry house. Exactly. Yeah. So every 11 feet, there were these windows on both sides of the structure that faced out. And when you've been sort of taking this building apart, have you discovered anything is in the walls? Um, so when we first took over the building, um, the bottom of these trusses, there was beadboard attached and then rotting tin, kind of in that classic square tin that yeah. you see in a lot of old buildings. Um, above that, <clears throat> through a little crawl space, uh, I ended up finding a stack of these uh, advertisements for superior cord tubes. So after the theater fire, um, it was converted into a Chrysler dealership. And for about 10 years, it was Chrysler. And then about 1940, it was taken over <clears throat> for various automotive sales and service. And one of them was Lawrence Park Garage. And then it was Specs Garage, um, I think up through 1970s. And then one of the things I'm most excited about is you've got an actual location of Leona's, which was, you know, have ne has never had like a, a brick and mortar shop before. It was only, you know, available in other, in other stores. Yeah, we're thrilled um, to have Leona's here as our partner in their ice cream scoop shop. Um, it's the perfect place for allowing people to really grow and build their business inside of a really a, a community, right? Where we'll have seven different businesses operating under this roof. Um, but Leona's is phenomenal. Um, and as far as ice cream scoop shops go, I don't think there's going to be a better one. Gosh, okay, well, I think we're going to go get a sneak peek at the shop. Let's do it. I'm here with Katie from Leona's, and this is, it's hard to see now, but this is going to be your first ever scoop shop. Yes, it absolutely is. We are standing at the threshold of the scoop shop. To the left of me is going to be um, some seating, some couches and tables, some relaxing space, and then to the right is our scoop shop. Can you give us a tour of this space? Absolutely. So this is hopefully where the line will be. Um, very long line. Very long line. 
Um, this is the countertop. So we'll have six flavors available um, in addition to some fun novelties. So we're working on a couple of things, some filled treats um, that are going to change by season. And um, behind that, we'll have a nice back bar where we'll be able to have all of our toppings. Uh, everything is handmade. So if we have a fruit sauce as a topping, that fruit sauce is something that we've made in-house. Yeah. So the caramel sauce that we use in our ice cream, you'll be able to get that on top of your, um, on top of your sundae. Uh, cool. Yeah, and some of our inclusions that go in, all the crunchy pieces that go in the ice cream will also be available for toppings. Um, and ultimately our plan is to have cookies baked um, and ready so you can assemble your own sandwich here. You know, last time we chatted, you always said like, nah, we're not going to have our own location. We're just happy making it and selling it in other places. So what happened? So a lot of things happened. It was kind of a, a storm of uh, different things. So during the pandemic, we saw a, an unprecedented rise in our ingredient costs. And there is a cap for what we can charge wholesale to our customers. So our margins started shrinking, 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 shrinking. And Krista, my wife and I realized we have to kind of figure out a new way. And then this opportunity came along with Lawrence Hall and it was kind of that perfect mix of opportunity and what was right for our business. We also have a really important thing and it's right behind you. So right now you can't tell what it is, but this is a window Whoa. to Butler. So this will be able to be open for sales. You can walk past. You get walk and buy with your dog and you can get a scoop of ice cream. Absolutely. And maybe a pup cup. Yeah. Um, absolutely. So that was so intriguing to us. And then you're doing some crowdfunding as well if people want to sort of you know invest in you essentially. Absolutely. So Pittsburgh really built us as a company. Um, it was a wild dream and Pittsburgh rallied and 10 years later, here we are. So we thought as we evolve into this new format, we would ask our community again to be a part of that, you know, reinvention. Well, good luck with your funding. And I can't wait to be walking by in a couple of months and just like, you know, knock on the window and, and order a cone for Butler. Absolutely. It'll also eventually be open late night. Oh, wow. Yes, which is super exciting. So late night ice cream. We'll also have, I don't want people to think that they're not able to come in and get um, the stuff that we have at our other stores as well. We'll have a grab and go um, freezer with pints and sandwiches as well. So you'll be able to get the stuff that you're used to and then experiment with some of our new items. Everything you know and love and more. Well, thank you so much and, and good luck with the build out. Oh, thank you, Boaz. We really appreciate you coming to check it out.